Jerrica J. Shanice is a singer, actress, model from the greater Chicago land area. She began singing in her church choir as a young girl, and later her love of music led her to discover musical theater in high school. Jerrica released her first project in 2015 and has since released two more under the artist's name of J. Shanice. She most recently was seen in the national tour of the Broadway musical Waitress. Upward and Onward presents our Meeting at the Crossroads music series. Well, hello, Jerrica. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us for our Meeting at the Crossroads series uh, for Upward and Onward Productions, uh, our music series, that is. Um, I don't know if I would say lucked up, but uh, it has just been a situation where um, I've interviewed a lot of colleagues and friends, and so it's good to actually interview someone that I did not know before. And so uh, it's nice to meet you and uh, for the world to be able to be introduced to you, the people that you don't know that maybe I know and vice versa. Um, mm -hmm. Get a chance to kind of do a bartering system here on uh, friends. <laughs> so we get yeah. your people and you get to meet some of ours. But um, uh, once again, this is our meeting at the Crossroads Music Series from Up and On Productions. And uh, we just have some questions for you just to kind of get to know you. This segment is mostly just about um, you and your journey through uh, performing and uh, the many things that you've done alongside um, what this uh, this pandemic has done to you uh, for your career and for your time and your creativity and what you've been doing during the pandemic and maybe what uh, other plans you have coming up obviously saying hello again, but where are you from, Jerrica? I am from um, Chicago, Illinois, okay. the great Chicagoland area, because I'm a little sur suburb, maybe, but we just say Chicago, because it's all, it's all one thing. I understand. So. <laughs> what, uh, when did you start your career? When did your career start off? Um... I started uh, being a performer professionally in 2012. Okay. So yeah, um, started doing um, theater and whatever gigs I could grab because I was like, I'm just trying to work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 2012 is when I like started to like make a living. Off make a of, living like, doing it, yeah. Now, did yeah. you start singing young as a, as a kid? Yeah, I grew up, the typical story, like, grew up in church, um, uh -huh. in a church choir. Um, I kept doing, like, choral stuff throughout school, um, which then led me into musical theater, mm -hmm. which is, like, a whole nother, you know, avenue. It is. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel like... That's like one thing is like I'm grateful for is I feel like I've been exposed to like a lot of like different avenues of like performance and like being like a vocalist. Mm -hmm. um, so like that versatility I'm thankful for because um, I did like I started recording music when I was like 18. Okay. I did like gospel. I did choral. I did the musical theater. I did I've listen to like all the rock i've done like gig band so i was like i'm yeah yeah said up with that <laughs> now are you normally in chicago um all the time or are you uh were you in new york for a while or what was what's, what's the what's the story i've been um traveling since like 2013 um okay. so i've been doing ships um and then yeah. working abroad so i've worked in japan i worked in hong kong Okay. Um, I've been over in like the Mediterranean, been in the Caribbean. So I've been, I've been traveling. And then when I'm, when I'm in the States, I bounce between Chicago and like New York, or if I have like mm -hmm. a contract somewhere random, then I'll be in whatever state. Understood. What, uh, what ship comp companies did you work for? I worked for Carnival in Norwegian. I worked for Norwegian as well, uh, on and off for about 11 years. Oh, wow. What ships did you end up doing on Norwegian? 
Um, I only did the star because it's for okay. the tall people. It um, is <laughs> the tall people ship, yeah. Everybody six feet, so it was like that's your ship. I was like, all right, with my people. When did you um, do that one? Uh, twenty seventeen. And what what part of twenty seventeen did you start? Because you look familiar, so I'm just wondering uh, if I saw you. April. Videos. Did we? I saw her still in April or March. I think our rehearsal was in April. It might have been okay. in March. March we might, or April. And we then might cr- cross each other's path real quick. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I in 2017, I was doing um the escape after midnight cast. Okay, we might have came and saw like y'all office run or Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I knew you looked familiar and just not because of the pictures that I've been looking at, you know, for the for this interview purposes, it's just I was like, oh, she looks familiar, so I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Uh, put a name to a face. Um, that's cool. Norwegian, yeah. I don't know what the cruise ships are going to be doing uh, right now. It's, it's like they keep pushing back the dates of uh, when they're going to actually be sailing. Um, yeah. I know it was going to be July, then it moved to August, then it moved to September. Now it's in October. Most of them are in November. You got a couple companies like Holland that were like, we're not doing anything to next year. Um, and um, I won't say inside scoop, but some conversations that I've had with a few colleagues that work in the cruise ship industry were just saying that um, even when they come back, they don't think that the production cast is going to be the huge thing right away because there's so many people that not only do they have to make sure that they're housed a certain way to follow all these stipulations and uh, these yeah, new rules that will be set. Yeah. But all these medicals that have to be done by, and you know, those medicals are a mug. Right yeah. There. That's, that's the hard process right there. You know, you, you have like an incomplete cast for rehearsals for like the first week or two because people are still waiting for their medicals to be cleared. So yeah. now, uh, did you enjoy doing cruise ships? I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed our shows and uh-huh. I enjoyed being able to travel wake up in a new place every day <laughs> yeah yeah I, lo- I love being able to just like go 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 mm-hmm. but i i don't particularly like living on a ship um and it might have been like my living situation because some people get like officer cabins and it's like living it up and that was not how i was living and so <laughs> yeah. no. i like to have a window when i sleep I yeah. like to wake up to the sun. I understand. And, um, yeah. But um, I totally understand what you're saying. And that will that will make or break a contract that would also change your mind about how you are perceive these type of contracts. Because, I mean, cruise ships and that life is not for everybody. But like mm-hmm. you say, I love uh, the waking up in a new place every day um, and traveling and just to go, go, go. And the schedule wasn't bad for the performing. I mean, for yeah. me, it was, it was good. I mean, compared to like the, you know, Broadway. Well, I also did, um, I was like a show band vocalist in 2013. And um, the workload between doing that and being in like the cast is night and day. I yeah. had one day off and I was singing like six hours. Uh-huh. A day. Like, sets uh and <laughs> and they were like they would do their like 30 minute show twice and then be at the club and like walk by me doing my set like hey girl and i'm just like <laughs> like i'm still so, at work it was those, yeah. those are called like the, what are those bands called the 2.0 bands um i did that on carnival so i'm not i don't really know okay yeah um, I had a couple of friends that did uh, did those. Yeah, that I mean, because you you're doing all the theme parties, you're doing. But it was all before the, they had two singers, so it was just me all night. Wow. Uh, okay. So you it just was before and, they added the double. Mm-hmm. It, it's almost like you know I can't get sick. <laughs> I don't have you know. Wow. Yep. Theme parties, sailaways, uh, welcome aboard. All of it. Everything you know, all day the decades the. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. So what what uh what is your favorite part of performing? Is it uh I know you say you did some of the wedding band gigs, the top forty bands, and uh you did the cruise ship. Uh you say you've done musicals. Uh what, what musicals have you done? 
is that a is that on your list of uh your favorites um yeah i'm it, musical theater is just so different because it there's so many more elements to it um mm -hmm. that yeah it's just it's special and it's something that like didn't come natural to me it's something i had to work for so yeah. i think that's why i really like hold on to that because it's like no i had i had to like put in work to like yeah get into this so like yeah i'm gonna really cherish this um but i did i'll go with like this past year um i was on the waitress tour before oh <laughs> so okay. it shut it shut it down so um i was doing that I love that show i love as, it um nurse norma okay <laughs> being somebody's auntie um yeah just the, the spicy attitude being nosy yeah <laughs> i loved it i love that show yeah eating pie every night i have not had pie since um <laughs> you I, pie it out. I, it's a lot of pie yeah. um and before i went to waitress i was i did newsies um at paramount mm. here in chicago <laughs> Love that show too. Um, before that, I was in Godspell, right. in Iverton in Connecticut. None of these shows are alike. That's good. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Wide yeah. range. Yeah. Yeah, I just like to have fun. And then before that, I was doing, uh, I was playing Whitney Houston in, uh, at Black Ensemble. I myself was not a natural musical theater person. I did go to a performing arts school, but musicals were not my thing. I loved acting and I loved singing. Mm -hmm. The two married together wasn't something that I was, that wasn't my fav favorite thing uh, to just break out into song. It was just weird to me uh, through conversations. <laughs> so I had to find that musical that I loved in order for it to be the acquired taste for me mm -hmm. um, to, push forward and then appreciate other shows because there were certain things about Broadway when I was coming up that I just felt was just so yeah da, 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 and I was like yeah I'm not in it but now I can uh, appreciate those hello dollies and stuff mm -hmm. and watch the shows and really enjoy it whereas if you caught me in my teens I was like not interested I like, don't, don't, like <laughs> don't like it at all just you nope know, don't want to go my mom actually I remember going on a school trip to uh I think it was England, England and Paris we went to is uh, the show choir. And my mom, I think there's a way that you say certain excursions or whatnot that you can pay for your child to attend if you know mm -hmm. if you have the money to do so. And uh, we were not um, a rich family, but you know, we, we, we went from middle class to upper middle class every now and then, depending on the year. She was a school teacher, so. Um, but she paid for me because she wanted me to have culture. She paid for me to go see a few musicals. And um, it was uh, Five Guys Named Mo. It was uh, Miss Saigon. 
and Starlight Express. None of my friends wanted to do that. You know, I, I wanted to be cool like them. I'm like, this is so lame, man. I don't want to be seeing this, you know. But I tell you, when I saw those shows, there was something that happened inside of me that I just felt great about. Now, I didn't really tell my friends about that because they would have laying me out through the conversation. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think I developed my major love for it. If I knew somebody that was in something, then that might be enjoyable for me at that point. Mm -hmm. But um, I hear you on that. Um, these are some good shows that uh, that you named. And like I was saying earlier, none are like the others. A, a wide range of shows that um, you have a wide range. And you not, you not only um, do performing as a singer, you, you've also been a model too. Or are you still a model? I'm not sure. Um, Technically, yes. Um, like, if an opportunity comes where it's like, oh, we shooting for this or something, then I'll do it. But it's not mm -hmm. something that I like actively pursue. It's kind of just like, oh, you tall, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing. <laughs> How tall are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm five eleven. Um, okay, yeah, you're tall. So if I put a heel on, I'm. Giants in the sky. <laughs> no, I hear that. No, because I'm 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 even five ten. So they definitely would not put us next to each other once you put those heels on. So I totally understand that. No, I used to go see some of the uh, star cast rehearsals, and I was like, these are some giants. Yeah, we came Everybody in and were like, oh, that's the star. <laughs> yeah, that's the star cast. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is so cool. That's so cool. So what what about what has the pandemic brought to you? Like, what, what have you been doing uh, since the pandemic? Uh, did you, were you one of those that lost a bunch of uh, work, or have you been thriving through this process? Um, a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah. So the the tour got postponed. Um, the waitress tour, yeah. Yeah, or uh, the dates that were on what we were contracted to do got canceled or postponed. Um, so then that sent me home and I was like, all right. <laughs> um, I was still auditioning, sending all my self tapes and stuff, booked, um, had another show booked and that's been postponed as mm -hmm. well. Um, so I was like, all right, um, still, being active and like looking for for work and still auditioning submitting um ended up um signing to a new agency so then that worked in my favor okay um, i'm trying to like get into voiceover work now so and that's I, that's something that i've been wanting to like figure out for a while now so now i have the opportunity to get yeah. into that so i'm focusing on that but it also like gave me like time to be creative that I didn't have because I've been literally bouncing show to show to show. Mm -hmm. So rehearsal to like a show run and I've had no time to even think about what I want to do creatively for me. Yeah. So it's giving me time to like write and make my own music again because I love doing that. inspiration behind the song coffee is there was this guy that i was into and he was super big on coffee dates like was always like let's go grab a cup of coffee i'm gonna go meet this person for coffee he was really big on coffee dates so i don't know if he like posted a picture or something that had me in that mindset so i heard the track the first phrase that stuck was come meet me for coffee and then i was like okay how can i expand on this without making this about coffee beans a cup and like sitting on a chair like <laughs> where can we take this where coffee is still the center but like it's not so literal so it started off as a coffee date and then it was like when you meet couples for the first time or like you're meeting like a friend significant other the first thing that people ask was like how did you meet how did you start dating and they always have that like one story so this song is the story of how this couple got together it's like oh the coffee date sparked it we hit it off and like now we're together for life so oh well, yeah it, it's, it's it gave me like my creative energy back because i haven't i haven't done 
anything in like two years. So. Track two is called Just. With this song, I don't know how I got in the mindset. You would think that I was really like in love for the first two tracks of this. I think I had just finished watching or had recently watched About Last Night. I think I had just, that had recently came on like a movie channel and I had watched it and so I was in the mindset of like, when you are dating someone and y'all been together for a while, it's just like easy. It's like breathing, being with that person. So that was like the inspiration behind Just. So the first thing that came to me was a love me like a Sunday afternoon. Cause you know, like when you're with your person and it's like the weekend for people that work like normal nine to five jobs when you get to like Sunday it's like we don't want to do anything you just like lay around all day or like with each other you'll watch some TV you'll do the things that you do it's just like air it's just like oh, man I love it that that's that's just well, that's good I mean it's a blessing and a curse um it's uh it's, it's weird how that happens when we start working and we just don't find that time for us. I know living in New York, a lot of my creativeness was taken away just because I was always focused on staying busy with work. And it wasn't so much what I called the nine to five jobs. I was just trying to survive, but I actually did pretty good at surviving as a performer. But do, in doing so, I had to always be busy. I was always busy. I was taking every job that was, you know, being handed to me. So I totally get that. Um, the, the the jobs that have not suffered as much that are thriving pretty much uh, during this process are the things that you sound like sound like you're interested in, which is the recording part, which is the voiceover. So the third track is called Free. Free is just that I got to free and I was like, I just want to have fun before I even knew what the track was gonna be before I wrote a word, anything. I was like, free is, before I knew it was free, I was like, it's gonna be fun, I wanna have fun. It's like a quarantine story of, for me personally, I mean, it's not a personal story. It didn't really happen, <laughs> the concept, is um, I am a, a working uh, entertainer, actor, singer person, and we're all out of work right now. Um, so we have a lot of free time outside of like self-taping or, you know, the few gigs we can grab. It's like we've never had so much time. We're, we've never had so much free time. The, the hook came free, do whatever we like. Because um, that's how I felt. I was like, I could do whatever I want right now. I've never been so free in my life. The verses are like me, you know, talking to a little something. Something, talk about doing a little something, something, meeting up in a little something, something. And I might have like took the verses from like a friend's actual quarantine story. And I was like, ooh, this is juicy. Ooh, this would make for a good, good song. There's no like details, so it's like, it's fine, you know. It's right. the live shows that have uh, really suffered, and we don't know when that's gonna come back the, the way that it was. I mean, I know some people that have started doing um, concerts and gigs. And, and whatnot, but the theater has still been a little bit put on pause. So I'm glad that you were able to kind of lean on another side of something that uh, that makes you happy. Would people rather want to hear house or disco? And whichever way one was going to decide which track I was going to really develop. And house won. And so um, that was the vibe of write it down. I, I am not like a house person, but it had that vibe to me. When I heard it, I was like, okay, I needed it to be empowering, um, uplifting. I needed it to be motivating. That's that's the vibe I was in. The first thing that came to mind was like, you like that? Then write it down. Because it's, it's in the Bible, it's in the Word. You know, you, you need to write things down. What did you learn about yourself or what have you learned about yourself during this pandemic, good or bad? Well, I can't speak for everybody, but I do feel like <laughs> a lot of people feel this way. But um, I lean into like my work a lot, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot. Like um, a lot of my identity is tied up in me working. Yeah. And so having this 
pause and I do not stop working. Like I will literally, I will literally close a show and mm-hmm. fly to a rehearsal the next morning. Like, like a workaholic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I, when it was like a pause and it was like, okay, now what do I do with my time? What do I, okay, what do I want to focus on? Cause I don't, I don't have this to focus on. So um, I think that helped the pandemic help me identify like, okay, you, you need to step back some when things do start, yeah. you know, rolling, you need to have time for yourself. Side of what you do for work because yeah. so much of me was focusing on that um so i feel like yeah that's like the biggest thing that i've like learned and uh so now you say you've leaned a little bit more on um i guess the music side of things uh what have you been recording something new as of late or are you working on stuff that was a little bit old, older projects and you're finally getting getting done with them or what what's the story there Nope. I literally was just like, Ugh, I'm depressed. Oh, I don't want no. nothing to do. And um, I, st- I, writing is, songwriting is like a form of like journaling for me. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how I get things out is I put it, I put it in song. Um, very honest with that. And so I wrote, I was just like penned a song of like what I was feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like posted it to like my social media just to like release it yeah. um so did that and then i just kept writing like song like a song a day like song after song after song okay. um and i was like hmm i'm gonna just keep i'm gonna just as long as i have the i don't have writer's block as long as something keeps coming to me i'm gonna just keep creating and just Good. see where it goes yeah, um, that's, that's good because so many people do, do get a writer's block. Yeah. So I got to the um, song called Anything But Born, which I released as a single. to that song it was like oh we're putting out a project okay. like nothing was, nothing was planned i was like we're doing it we're putting out a project i i wrote it and was like yes i'm feeling it this is my this is yes uh-huh. and so i put it out like it was just so fast i put it out i like 
messaged like 50 people and was like, hey, gonna do a visual for this song that I literally just created. Um, do you want to do it? And then I was like, whoever sends it back. So a bunch of people sent me um, videos back. I made a visual for the song, put out the single. Um, and then like a month and a half later, put out the EP. Um, but I actually just released it last Sunday. Um, and so yeah, nothing was planned. It just kind of like was like this is happening this is this is where it's going and that's great that's great well, i'm wishing you the best with that that's great what is uh what would you consider the style of music that uh you're writing and performing um it's pop it's uh -huh. like it's yeah i would say it's pop i'm i'm an r&b baby um uh grew up that way but like I've always listened to pop. I've never like not listened to pop. Yeah, yeah. Um, or like just a lot of genres in general. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it's pop. It's like maybe alternative R and B. Okay. Uh, where it's like a little crossover y. Mm -hmm. um, but I would just I would qualify it as as pop. Yeah. yeah. We'll just have to check that out, and I'll make sure that we share that on here for the the listeners and watchers to be able to find your music and uh, find your stuff. If given the chance, if you were able to go back in time, what would you tell your younger self as a warning or as a, you know, lifting up the spirits of a young Jerrica? What would you say? Mm. Oh, I don't know. Uh, just whatever, whatever you want to do, like start now all the tools that you need you already have like the resources will come yeah um so yeah just any anything that you want to do just start towards it now yeah i love it i love it i love it well uh, once again i'm your host darren lorenzo and on behalf of up with and on productions and our meeting at the Crossroads Music Series. We would like to thank you, Jerrica, for joining us on this path to be a part of our meeting at the Crossroads. Uh, it has been such a pleasure, pleasure uh, speaking with you and talking to you and uh, getting to know your journey and some of the stories that you had uh, to give to us. So just want to thank you for your time and your patience, and I'm wishing you the absolute best uh, on the rest of your, your path and your journey throughout life and your career. Um, just wishing you the best um i'm looking forward to listening to more music from you and we have some music that's going to play after this for the listeners and the watchers out there in uh virtual land <laughs> so uh you know we wish you the best and you take care of yourself and be safe yeah yep all right J. Shanice Exum, and I'm here with Upward and Onward Productions with their meeting at the Crossroads Music Series. Um, had a great time 
Um, you can find me on all social media networks, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all under the name J Shanice. That's J-C-H-E-N-I-S-E. -E. Um, and you can find my new project, The Silver Lining EP, on all digital streaming platforms. Um, so that's Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon. It's all on it. Um, and yeah, I hope you check it out. Thanks. Well, on behalf of Up With Normal Normal Productions, we'd like to thank you for hanging out with us for the show, our meeting at the Crossroads Music Series. Now, your attention and time is much appreciated, and we look forward to seeing you next time for more performances and music. Remember, success is only an arm's length away. Stay safe, stay home if you can, and if you can't, keep practicing social distance with a healthy and cautious way of life. Up With Normal Normal, folks. <laughs>